It's you. Thanks. What do you think? <laughs> On another matter. Hubert of House Vestra is my attendant. His family is unusual in that they're noble but lack territory of their own. Hubert is deeply loyal to me, and you can trust him completely. In fact, I imagine he's quite grateful for what you've already done. Surely you know someone like Linhart. He's as bright as they come yet just as lazy as well. That's simply how he is, though. I can't force him to apply himself, but he'll come around, most likely. Petra isn't from the Empire. She's the granddaughter of the King of Brigid, which is an archipelago situated off our western coast. You'll find her a quick study, a gifted fighter, and endlessly curious. But always come prepared to talk, because she'll definitely want to pick your brain. Kaspar is the second-born son of a great and noble house. But as he's not the heir, you might say he joined the Academy to make his own way. War and fighting are his sole pursuits, so I bet the two of you will get along just fine. One of our classmates usually stays holed up in the dormitory instead of coming on these assignments. Her name is Bernadetta. 
If you bump into her, don't be surprised if she screams and runs away. That's sort of her thing. Concerning, if I'm honest, my sincere apologies for asking this of you. I know you're heading for Ramire Village in order to find Gerald's mercenaries, but well, perhaps you might consider changing your mind and accompanying us to Garagmach Monastery instead. And why would I do that, exactly? Because you've done us a great service, and we don't have the means in camp to properly reward you. At the monastery, however, we can repay your kindness in full. Also, between you and me, this evening's turn of events was quite the embarrassment for the church. We allowed students of the Officers' Academy out of our sight, and house leaders of great political consequence at that. And then they cross swords with bandits. If word got out, well, let's just say it would sit poorly with everyone. So you see why we must ensure you are well compensated. Also, there may be some papers for you to sign, perhaps in blood. This sounds more like hush money than a reward. Yes, that's exactly what I told the fool knight who suggested it. Me, I'd just as soon send you on your way, but I fear I'm obligated to escort you back. Anyway, the whole thing will be much easier if you simply agree to come along. Just as a formality, of course. I think that was a threat. And here I thought he was a big softy. Well, what do you think? Garrick Mock is in the opposite direction of where we need to be, but this man seems rather set on having us accompany them. I guess I'm not opposed to helping out a little more. I'll come with you to the monastery, but I'm not staying a single minute longer than I have to. Bless you, my friend. What a noble soul you are. I'd say you saved my bacon, but that would be utterly hammy. Alois, has anyone ever told you that you're... Don't. Some truths are simply too painful to bear. While I'm no expert, I fear the poor man's heart couldn't handle the shock. Hmm? Told me what? Uh, told you how dashing you are in that armor. Not just any man could pull off that look. Ah, you like it? Wonderful. I admit, I've received no small share of positive comments on it. There's a grand story behind every last ding and dent. Enough to keep me talking for a week. Why, take this one here. We heard you'll be joining us at Garrick Mock. Perhaps somewhat unwillingly, I might add? I know this wasn't in your plans, but if it lets us get to know each other better, perhaps it will prove worth it in the end. Unwilling or not, we've got a long road ahead, so let's try to keep the mood light. I hesitate to ask this, considering you're only here because of us. But, well... Are you sure about this decision? The last thing we want is to delay you from your own business. The knights may seem unwilling to bend, but it's not as if you have no say in the matter. Actually, I see this is just another chance to better myself. You are more gracious than I. But, as I see you've made peace with it, I will leave the matter be. Yes, yes, that's quite enough chatter. Let's save our energy for the road. To the monastery! Listen, I know this one's on me. 
I'm the one who roped you into coming back to camp, after all. But I'll find a way to make it up to you, I promise. Thanks, Claude. I know you will. Hey! Hurry up back there, or we'll leave you behind! You know you've had a busy day when you rub shoulders with the heirs to the Empire, the Kingdom, and the Alliance. I think they're a fascinating group of people myself, but what do you make of them? Well, it seems like Edelgard thinks high enough of me. She's got this elegant air about her, but somehow doesn't hold any disdain for mercenaries. It feels like Dimitri's always checking in on me, every chance he gets. He'll definitely make a good king, the kind who looks after his people. Claude's a laid-back kind of guy who doesn't really strike me as noble, and I mean that in a good way. Something tells me he's gonna be easy to work with. <laughs> of course you only pick up on their rosy qualities. You really are a delight. Have I told you that lately? Still, you'd better pick up the pace before you vex these people any further. Prologue. Three Houses. Deep in the forest, the mercenary meets a trio of youths, each a student at Gerig Mach's Officers Academy and a leader of one of the school's three houses. Striking down the bandit chief who attacked the students brings undue attention to the mercenary, who soon arrives at the hallowed gates of Gerig Mach. And with that, may I present the mercenary I spoke of. Greetings. My name is Rhea, and I am the Archbishop of the Church of Seros. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for rescuing our students. I'm just glad I could help. Such modesty is not required around me. Your actions were truly commendable. However, the reason we summoned you here was not simply to express our gratitude. We have a proposal for you. One made on behalf of the church itself. What kind of proposal? Someone told you of the Officers Academy here at the monastery, yes? We would have you join this academy as a student. You what? Though you are a mercenary, I understand you are not currently beholden to any one particular employer. Also, the students you rescued are close to your own age. Your life could be greatly enriched here. Or she's heard about our power and wants to keep us on a short leash. And yet she's taking it almost as a given that we'll accept. It's infuriating. I need to get stronger if I'm going to do what I need to. If your fancy school can really make that happen, consider me interested. The Knights of Seros, as well as many other powerful warriors, pass daily through the gates of this hallowed monastery. If strength is what you are after, we can certainly provide it in spades. They've really talked us into a corner here. I think I see where this is going. I'm in. A wise decision. We will do all we can to ensure you do not regret it. I believe you will go far. If I may, permit me to tell you a bit more about the school itself. 
The Academy is divided into three houses and draws in the most promising young talents from every corner of Fodlan. Some are noble-born, while others spring from more humble roots. But within these walls, all are treated as equals. We ask our prospects to spend a year living under the same dormitory roof, so they can challenge each other, work hard, and grow together. Each of our houses corresponds to one of Fodlin's three regions. Edelgard leads the Black Eagle House, which is for students from the Adrestian Empire. Dimitri leads the Blue Lion House, home to students from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. And Claude leads the Golden Deer House, for students from the Leicester Alliance. We could select a house for you ourselves, but as all of this was our idea, perhaps we should leave this decision to you. You are something of a special case, after all. So I can join any house I want? Yes, you have simply to name it. So you wish to join Edelgard's Black Eagles. Are you certain? Yep, that's the one. I'm sure of it. May you build wonderful and lasting friendships in your new house. Well then, with that taken care of, it's time to decide which of us will supervise which house. Yes, it turns out we just underwent a last-minute roster change. I guess you two haven't met. This is Professor Yuritsa, our weapons instructor. Hello. Nice meeting you, uh, sir. Don't load me up with too much homework, all right? <laughs> Do my ears deceive me? Or is that curiosity I hear in your voice, Professor Yuritsa? I thought all the houses were the same to you. Perhaps you should be in charge of our new student's house, hmm? I don't care. You decide. Well, you'll certainly hear no objections from me. Professor Manuela, you and I can take charge of the remaining houses. What? It's decided already? 
I was at least expecting a fight. Maybe some hair pulling? And as for you, my mysterious new student, I look forward to getting to know you much, much better throughout the year. The gall of these people making decisions for you. It's enough to make one's head spin. Uh, right. In any case, I'm looking forward to learning from you, Professor Yuritsa. I'll inform you of our first mission soon. Sorry, what mission? Oh, did we fail to mention that? Each month, every house in the Academy is given a mission entailing some form of service to the Church. Well, what do you think? I believe there is a very good chance it will work. Perhaps, Lady Edelgard. But is that chance not outweighed by the danger of matters going awry? We have managed to walk the knife's edge so far, but what you are suggesting is open hostility. If they so much as catch wind of our intentions, things will go sideways very quickly. Regardless, this is our last opportunity to save her. Frankly, it's a miracle we even have the chance. I thought you once proclaimed not to believe in miracles, Lady Edelgard. And I don't. At least not the kind one has to sit around and wait for. But right now, everyone is exactly where we need them. Her, the bandits, the string pullers, and the perfect instructor with the perfect mission. I'm going to make this miracle happen, and I will do so for our future. Hmm. Then we'd best have a plan in place to finish the job, in case they catch on. I expected you to burn a few bridges, but this plan would be akin to setting half the countryside on fire. Which is exactly why I'm counting on you, Hubert, and why I'm grateful to have you by my side. Welcome to the Black Eagle House. I'm pleased you selected us. Whoa, wait, what? You're a student now? And not only that, you're one of us? That's great! Wait, stop! I don't know this person! Oh, why are there so many new faces? That's what you get for skipping this year's first field excursion burn. A lot happened. There was even a bandit attack. Did you really not hear about any of this? Bandits? <sighs> now I'm extra glad I skipped out. I must say, the church took a bold step in enrolling you. A decision which I, of course, fully support. You helped Edelgard, and we stand to learn quite a bit from one so skilled. Yes. I have eagerness to examine the fighting of mercenaries. We should be sparring, one versus one. If anyone needs me, I'll be asleep and... Wait, hold on. Do you have a crest? Did Professor Hanneman even check? Oh, he checked all right. Sorry to say I'm certifiably crestless. Strange. You definitely seem the type. But I suppose I'm just imagining it. And now you know the rest of our house. As you already met some of us in camp, I assume you knew what you were getting into. We may not be perfect, but we support each other as best we can. Please try your utmost to get along with everyone. Here approaches Professor Yuritsa. That makes all of us. Remember your mission? We are to eliminate the remaining members of the Iron King's thieves that attacked our camp. The Chief, Costas, has already been struck down. 
And now only a scattering of brigands remain. Even with our limited experience, we should be able to defeat them handily. Good. Prepare yourself. Of course, Profe- Oh, he's gone. So it would seem. Right then. We'd better get all of our waterfowl in a row. Wait, but I... I need to tell the professor I can't participate? Oh, good work, Bernie. Why didn't you speak up sooner? I know what you mean. I never even got the chance to break out my best. Leave it to me, Professor. He's a real tough nut, that's for sure. Says just as much as he has to, then makes tracks. Um, well, the less you say, the greater your mystique. <laughs> True enough. There's not much charm in someone who talks your ear off at every opportunity. Whatever the case, I expect all Black Eagles to participate in this mission, including you, Bernadetta. You can do this. And I look forward to seeing our mercenary friend here in action. Careful, Edelgard. If you set me loose out there, there won't be any bandits left for you. There you are, Yuritsa. I have word from the knights. It is time? Yes. The bandits have fled north into the canyon bordering Count Rose land in the kingdom. But the knights have cut off their escape, and now stand ready to provide whatever support the students may require. We'll leave at once. I needn't remind you this is the first real battle for some of our charges. I trust you will keep them safe. Though I likely do not need to worry with an old hand like you at their side. No, you don't. You there. It's time for the mission. Gather the others. About time we saw some action. Lost sight of them? Ashamed to admit it, but yes. It's possible someone magicked the bandits away. But why go to that kind of trouble for a handful of highwaymen's scum? So be it. We'll follow the blood scent. Right, of course. We'll follow... Wait, what? We're leaving. Everyone, follow me! Professor, wait! Well, he must have some idea where the bandits went. Let's hurry after him. Pathetic. Professor Yuritsa, you shouldn't charge ahead like that. It's far too dangerous. Wait, what is all this? <laughs> Bandits! Dead by my hand. Yes, they look quite dead indeed. Are these the miscreants we were meant to deal with? How is one to tell? One uncouth ruffian looks much the same as any other. Do you know, Professor? Were you following some manner of lead? No, but it's them. They were trying to escape to that fortress. That fortress? Yes, Kaspar, that's what he said. Something you want to share? Nope. It just seems suspicious. You are something else, Kaspar. Still, I guess the place does look kind of suspicious. We're near the border of the Kingdom and the Empire, but that is no Imperial outpost. It's not the Kingdoms either, and they're not flying any kind of banner. I'm guessing it's a bandit hideout. Then give us allowance to be storming their base and crushing them under our feet. It might be a little dangerous for us to handle on our own, Petra. Yes! I, I mean, I agree. We should all, um... Go home! Right now! But the bandits might be inside, and they must answer for their crimes! 
It is our noble duty to finish them off before they can bring harm to another soul. This isn't about nobles. It's about doing the right thing, period. And striking down evil is the Caspar way. We'll be heroes if we manage to take out the entire bandit outpost. This is the kind of stuff I live for. Since when are you so gung-ho? Oh, right. Since always. Enough. This is not our decision to make. Professor Yuritsa? The mission stands. Enter the fortress. Dispatch any bandits you find. There are no signs of life. We may be chasing ghosts. Professor, are you having the ability to speak with ghost spirits? It is just an expression, Petra. It means there is probably no one here. Ah, I am understanding now. You have my thanks. This language has much peculiarity some of the times. Well, if that's settled, let us make ready. Make sure you're prepared before we head out. We'll put the bandits to rout. Follow me. Huh? Hey! We got the intruder! You must be a bad guy if you're pointing a weapon at me. Get ready to pay! No match for us. Though I do wish they'd given me time to announce my name. Careful. Do not let the enemies be gaining up on you. Take this! Out of the way! I'm not letting you past here. My life depends on it. Now we know who to kill to open the gate. Interior. The 
This place is bigger than I thought. Split up. All of these dead bodies are enough to numb the senses. Is that a treasure chest? Mm, yes. It seems we will need a key to open it. Ugh. I was all ready to grab a nice haul from that chest. And now those intruders are all over the thing. Done. That bandit appears to be holding the key. inside the fortress than it was on the outside. I can't take this anymore! I want to go home! Oh, 
certainly not what we signed up for. of securing the bandit hideout. Unless something else concerns you, Professor. Search the basement. Something is amiss. There's a prisoner down here. She looks like an academy student. to rescue me? Lady Edelgard! Monica, how did you... No, my questions can wait. Thank you for saving me. Don't let the girl escape, or Kranya will make us wish we were dead. It's not safe here. We must take the girl and run. Whoever they are, they seem to be targeting that student. It falls upon us to keep her safe, no matter the cost. you're capable of. Yeah. 
It's about to murder you. Or, you know, don't. It's her. Talk so deep. Kill her. Out of the way! <laughs> Gotta keep aiming higher. If you truly are Kranya, then it is you who will die this day. Good. Then we can proceed as planned. Going to be trouble. On your guards, everyone. Attack in force. You'll never defeat it alone. All the numbers in the world I'm won't not save finished. you. I am your man. I am here to aid you. This is unlike any beast I have ever encountered. It will be a grueling battle unless we combine our strength. Its strength is beginning to wane. Press the attack. Defeated a demonic beast? Impossible! Talus isn't going to like this at all. You'll pay for this. You'll all pay! That snake escaped. But still, Monica is safe, and that's what matters. Must get stronger. I won't let myself stop here. <laughs> Gotta keep aiming higher. Who knew this power slept within? I must make the most of this ability. This power will serve me in the times to come.
I thought I would never breathe fresh air again for as long as I lived. I'm not sure what to say except thank you, everyone. How did you end up in such an awful place, Monica? I heard you went missing in House Ox territory. I did indeed. In fact, I was on the verge of graduation when I was kidnapped by the strangest people. Oh, how silly of me not to introduce myself. I'm Monica Von Ox. I'm the eldest child of Baron Ox, and one of your highness's most loyal subjects. Seeing as you saved my life, I plan to devote that very life back to helping your cause. You've not changed at all, though I do appreciate the enthusiasm. Monica was a Black Eagle in last year's class. One might say she's part of the old guard. I'm not sure how I feel about you calling people old. Hmm, yes. I think I understand. This all began when the Knights lost sight of the bandits and you gave chase. Afterward, you entered a suspicious fortress and rescued a missing student. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I'll be sure to smooth things over for you once we're back. Sounds good. But, uh, why are you even here, Alois? Because the Knights sent for help after you left them behind. Did you expect anything different? Not that I'm trying to lay blame at your feet. I know you were following Professor Yuritsa's lead, so I think everyone involved can head home knowing they did just swell. For as you know, all swell that ends swell. <sighs> Still, I find this a rather grave turn of events. To think the same bandits who attacked our charges were behind another student's abduction. Hmm? I never said I was kidnapped by bandits. You... you didn't? Now that I think on it, not everyone in that fortress was dressed like a common rogue. Perhaps the bandits were mere decoys while some other villain pulled strings behind the scenes. Yeah, there was one real piece of work. Kranya, I think, who managed to escape. Now, I've seen all kinds of people as a mercenary, and she was definitely not your everyday bandit. You're on the right path. Perhaps I should just tell you who kidnapped me, seeing as I already know. What? Why didn't you mention this earlier? Everyone was busy speculating, so it was difficult to cut in. What do you know, child? Out with it. Her Highness can vouch for this, but my memory is quite strong. Try Remarkable. You never forget a face, even one seen only at a glance. Your Highness, I... um... thank you for the compliment. <clears throat> I'm certain of what I saw. The one who kidnapped me was surely Tomas the Librarian. Tomas? Impossible! But Tomas has been at Garrig Mach even longer than I have. I don't want to believe it, but based on what you say, we've no choice but to investigate. But Sir Alois... Be on guard. If Tomas is in league with Kranya, he is dangerous. Very well. I will quietly report the matter to Lady Rhea and leave the decision in her hands. Not a word of this to anyone. Is that clear? Well, now things are getting interesting. Honestly, did not see this coming. So what do you make of this Kranya? Why do you think she was at the fortress? You seem preoccupied with her during the battle. Is she a friend of yours? Sadly, I wouldn't know. My memory is but a shadow at this point. Gone! Vanished! Lost! I remember meeting you, but before that, nothing at all. 
And yet, the moment I saw her, I was struck with the most inexplicable feeling. I couldn't tell you if it was revulsion or affection. It was simply pure emotion. And here I thought I had it tough. Are you worried about me? How adorable! Oh, but I do love that about you. And so, the Archbishop has elected to apprehend Tomas. He has been away from Garrig Mok for days now. During his absence, an investigation of his behavior and personal effects laid bare his hostility to the Church. The Knights have been instructed to await his return and take him in. As quietly as possible, of course. We want him alive, so we might discover the whereabouts of his associates. I'm glad they actually believed me. If they doubted you, you would have known it the moment they clapped you in irons and led you away. So who is this Tomas guy anyway? You say he works in the library? He does. I've lost track of how many times I've spoken to the man. No surprise, Lynn. You practically live at the library. Um, so what did he look like again? Is he the big, burly one? Burly? Not even close! He's a frail old man with a walking stick. From what I understand, he's been at Garrick Mach for 40 years, at least. It is hard to imagine that he had been plotting evil that whole time. I wonder what led to his transformation. Transformation? Would someone not be noticing if Tomas changed his appearance? He meant a mental transformation, not a physical one. Tomas must have changed his mind about the church at some point. I am excited to have learning of this strange new expression. I must be thanking you. If they were really worried about transformations, you'd expect they would turn their gaze to you. Good to know they're nice enough not to do so. So this Tomas person sent the bandits after us? What an awful man. We're lucky to be alive. You're one to talk, Bernadetta. You weren't even there. Yes. You were not having reason to fear for your continued living. Uh, you're right! Everyone, pipe down. Something's happening outside. Are they ready at the gates? Yes, sir. Every exit is covered. Well, well, it sounds like Tomas has returned. I don't know why I know this, but you need to get out there, and quickly. I think Tomas is here. I, uh, I'll be right back. Wait, we should discuss this before you... <sighs> Never mind. <laughs> that man down there. Lady Rhea wants to speak with you. I suggest you accept. <laughs> this doddering persona of mine will benefit me no further. What is this? <laughs> Vermin, you will pay for this. Find him! Right! What he did was just like 